All right, I'm going to digress somewhat now, and, and it's a story that I could have covered any time in the last week, but I've been kind of reluctant because it was a bit all about me-ish in some ways. Eight years ago, a young New Zealand author called Eleanor Catton wrote a book called The Luminaries. This book was unusual in that it had a kind of structure of diminishing chapter sizes in the phase with the, with the moon, with the, the cycles of the moon. Really clever, really arty. And it was set, I think, on the West Coast and it was some sort of Victorian pot boiler, but it had this funny little little trick in it about, about how long the chapters were um, in the phases of the moon. It was called The Luminaries. Well, it went on to call, win the Booker Prize, which used to be called the Man Booker Prize, until I presume all the liberal lovies in the book world said we can't have man in there because man is no good. So it became the Booker Prize. It is the greatest prize in English literature. And what do you know, Eleanor Catton from little old New Zealand, she won the Booker Prize and became um, very rich and an instant celebrity, an instant celebrity. And this is eight years ago, and I'm just filling in you because most of you won't remember. I'd almost forgotten about this. And she wins uh, the Booker Prize, and she goes, she is fated around the world um, by people because she's written the greatest novel in the world um, eight years ago. And she's in, um, but she's a screaming lefty. Her dad is some sort of weird math Canadian mathematician academic. Um who works on a roading gang because he doesn't believe in money or something. And um, she's over at some literary festival, I think it was in India, and she just has a crack at John Key and she says New Zealand's a terrible country and it doesn't fund the arts um, and it's got no culture and it's got tall poppy syndrome. And the amazing thing about her, and she launched into John Key and she was just, she was just a bit of a... A little biatch, okay, about New Zealand. Now, I called her, I called her an ungrateful hooer, which caused quite some controversy at the time. And a bit of a social, one of the biggest social pylons I've ever been subjected to by the Liberal lovies. And there were calls for me to resign or be fired from my then job on another Talkback uh, channel, and I didn't. And I didn't apologise. Tom Scott wrote a cartoon about it, which is hanging in my office here at the platform. And it was quite the brouhaha. I invited Eleanor Catton to come on and I was going to explain why I called her an ungrateful hooer. Um, and I did because she had received so much government money in her early career to allow her to develop her writing skills and therefore win the Booker Prize and become... World famous, her hypocrisy knew no bounds. So that's why I'd called her an ungrateful hua. Um, she didn't come on my program, but her dad did and tried to ambush me and was most unpleasant and aggressive man who seemed slightly unhinged. Um, he did seem slightly unhinged. Um, she's never come on. She's never engaged with me. Uh, she's played the hurt, shrinking violet. Um, at the same time, the Taxpayers Union... Not quite as well known then as it was now. The Taxpayers Union says she should give all the money she'd received to develop her career through government jobs and grants and events. She should give it back. Oh, and there was outrage over that. Okay, so that's the preamble. Here we are eight years later. And it's a long time between drinks, but and presumably because she's had plenty of money, uh, Eleanor Catton has published a new book called Burnham Woods which the Liberal lovies in New Zealand media like Kim Hill are basically creaming their pants over. It sounds more accessible than the luminaries, which I just could not finish. Um, and I may well read Burnham Wood, which first came to my attention because it's been pointed out in a number of reviews that eight years on in a snappy repost, uh, Eleanor Catton's had a go at me. We'll talk about that later. But she also went on um, and she has revived her argument with the Taxpayers Union, calling them sinister 11 times in an interview with Him Kill on um, Red Radio, National Radio, which has just survived being dragged into the real world with the axing of the uh, media merger. 11 times she called um, the Taxpayers Union um, sinister. 
And at risk of being sinister, I thought that deserved a right of reply, which Radio New Zealand will not give the Taxpayers Union. So Jordan Williams from the Taxpayers Union joins us now. Jordan, good morning to you. Good morning, Sean. Have I accurately described what went on? Broadly, yes. I mean, I um, I wouldn't use the same descriptions or or, or name calling. We came in about a little what? bit later. About who? Uh, you wouldn't call well, Eleanor well, Catton an ungrateful whore. Would, well, that's, that, 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 that's not really our style. What? Uh, uh, what but would you? Say? Would you in private call her that? Uh, well, we're not in private, so it's not. It, it, no, it, but it, would it, you it, in it, private? It, 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 would you in well, private? I would say that. <laughs> I do. I do think that that um, to to still be salty about our actions, what, eight years later, but to uh, to cast, uh, what, what was the word you used, sinister? I thought it was 12 times, I'll take your word. 12 11 time, times, 11 times, yeah. Out, 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 out of the blue. For, let's, let's stand back and look at, at, um, at what happened here. And you did get one important detail wrong. Mm. She made that all those comments about John Key in New Zealand being won by money hungry, greedy politicians that don't value culture. Yeah. And what the taxpayers, I mean, you had your big brouhaha with her, and we simply asked Creative New Zealand, well, how much money have we actually given Eleanor Catton? Yeah. And, and it turned out it was many tens of thousands, I think about 50 grand at the time. Yeah. But what the perception is, is that we just funded her prior to her success. In actual fact, New Zealand taxpayers ponied up, or Creative New Zealand ponied up with our money, and funded, for example, translations of her very successful Luminaries book into other languages, that what, for, from our point of view, the real problem was even after she was commercially successful, she was taking money, and we simply made the point that, look, if, if you accept there's not enough money for developing artists and things like that, the very obvious solution is to pay the money back or stop taking what is frankly, at the time, by then, um, corporate welfare. Mm. One would imagine she I, has made millions of dollars from the luminaries. I would assume so. I mean, she, she's, a, she's pretty powerful now and the like, but it was the framing of that interview where Kim Hill sort of introduced it and said, you know, that you were criticised by people, thou we shalt not name, I think Kim Hill said. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which speaks volumes to sort of the culture at Radio New Zealand. I mean, as I say, what the, 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 the name calling it wasn't not our style. We simply injected, you know, some facts in, and to be frank, the role of a taxpayer transparency group like ours is to do that. No different to when we hammer big corporations for taking taxpayer money and corporate welfare. This is very, you know, very similar. To go on eight years later and say it was that was sinister, uh, I, I think it frankly speaks more about her than us. I think that only in Radio New Zealand land would you be given given the platform to do that with zero Oh, no, come on, come on. Uh, Today and FM would do it, the platform, the uh, project would no, do would, it. No, there wouldn't be zero. There wouldn't, it was a long-form interview. Yeah. There was zero, zero um, pushback whatsoever on the dispersion she cast. And what, what annoyed me was that... They were because she did come under, you know. I mean, you, I accept, Sean, you became under um, fire for that from one side of politics. She feels, and probably rightly so, that she came under fire from nasties on the other side of politics. But with respect, that, that wasn't us. Um, there was a little bit of name calling by you, but. In fairness, the... Um, well, I was just saying in working man's terms what you were pointing out and what you, I suppose you think is a more erudite way. I think so. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I think so. But what annoys me is that they project all of that whole pile on yeah. on the simple fact that we asked Creative New Zealand, they gave us the information that within about 48 hours. They were very quickly to give it. Yeah. I think deep down Creative New Zealand were quite annoyed too Yeah. that they were being criticised by someone that they had so clearly invested in yeah. And it just, it's that sort of personalisation or the, the attack or, or um, uh, pro projecting that there's some 
um, sinister motive, which is exactly what she said. Um, that is very annoying. Have you had only any re- right of reply from Radio New Zealand from Kim? Oh, of course not. Of course not. Well, I'm you should that, complain I'm to them. I mean, that is a breach of broadcasting standards well, to allow someone to go on and back we, someone we, else and I not give a right of reply. With, I have met before and been given assurances by the Chief Executive of Radio New Zealand that simply fall hollow, that about... Because time and time again, people are given platforms to criticise our organisation, and we are now by far the largest um, fiscally conservative or centre-right um, political group in New Zealand, and yet we, we've never had a year time on, on that Sunday morning show, or, or for that matter, even um, even the morning, uh, what was it, nine to noon, you yeah. know, in the in the eight, nine years of the taxpayers, uh, yeah. sorry, nine years of the taxpayers' union. Yeah. Look, I, it's sort of, it, it, it's water off a duck's back, really, but it's, and it's one of the reasons we were against the TVNZ, RNZ merger, is, you, is at least TVNZ still try for some balance, um, although I do worry that that is even that starting to go down the um, down the drain. But in Rally New Zealand land, it's just zero. They are they. I, I don't even think they're self aware of their own blink. No, um, it's a very young newsroom. It's a very you know journalists are now taught. My old um, two IC at the Taxpayers Union was trained as a journalist originally. And it's no, they no longer strive to provide both sides of the story. It's about identifying virtue. Yeah, yeah, and, absolutely. And, that, and it's not like that's Eleanor Catton's the only example. We look at the, uh, I think it was New Zealand On Air funding or Film Commission funding, $750,000 to a guy called David Farrier for a weird personal vendetta with a guy mentally unwell, and David Farrier probably is too, and I've just seen some recent reviews of that movie from... Oh, no, I, I think that's... Yeah, I, mean, I, 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 I think that's a bit of it. Look, I've not well, seen well, the film. Well, have you not so seen I, the film? Have you not aware of that, Jordan? Uh, Steve I've Brawness re- has written on, and I think Bomber Bradbury's written on the last week, saying that, that he got $750,000 is just amazing. Yeah, I, um, what I do know about, and we have publicly criticised is the appropriateness of the Film Commission paying for that documentary on, uh, well, it's now multiple documentaries, isn't it, on a sitting in Chloe Sorbrook. And from their perspective, they, they actually ran with the argument that it will, it, it's not... Um, Judith Collins has says nice things about Chloe. Like, yeah. she's some sort of... She, she's a, above politics. She's some sort of hero to worship. It's just a weird world that, that that these people think that that's what that's what counts now. It's yeah. just, you know, just come back to where is the professionalism? Yeah. Where is the um, you know? Twenty years ago, we had a, a much more effective state services commissioner. Um, that these things were respected, but it, it's not just about rules. It's simply professionalism that mm. seems to be out the window in so many organisations in Wellington, particularly these arts ones that have the, the we successive governments have stacked them with uh, the, the, yeah. the sort of people And the that, fact is, look, we've also got to recognise, though, haven't we, sure. that Eleanor Catton is not mentally well. She's been open about the fact that no she's idea. had... I'm no, not, no, 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 the interviews. Not, if you I'm listen to the interviews, yet. Jordan, if you listen to the interviews, instead of stopping trying to be nice in the middle of the road, Jordan, listen to the facts... Eleanor Catton has said and said in, in the interview with Kim Hill that she suffered severe paranoia and could not go out of the house because she thought buildings were going to fall on her. So I think we've got to be gentle there. My question to you is, are you going to read the book? <laughs> no, I'm a, I'm a new dad again. I, can't, I don't have time for the, um, for the luminaries. I have um, read a couple of reviews of her new book and it is basic. I mean, it, it, it is taking a very aggressive, um, it's through storytelling, yeah. uh, um, crit- critique of yeah. capitalism and... and, yeah. and I, I think she's a bit the, of a cry the, bully. The modern world. I think she's a bit of a cry bully, to be honest, Jordan. I thank you for your time this morning. Jordan Williams from the Taxpayers Union. Sometimes Jordan sits there and he tries to be all tough, but he doesn't want to be tough because he wants to be woke at the same time. He's a bit like Chris Luxon, really. Um, but I say this of Eleanor Cat, and I probably will read the book because it sounds like a good rump. Romp. Um, 
And there's a character in there supposedly based on me, but she's got it wrong. Because I've never met Eleanor and she's never asked to find out anything about me. Eleanor Catton based her view on the world of what she reads on social media, even though she says social media is a terrible thing. She bases her view of the world on intellectual and academic uh, dinner parties in Thorndon, where she probably drinks so much, because I do understand she has a booze problem. Um, but, Eleanor, I'd love to have you on the show, and you would be welcome, but I'm going to put you right on a couple of things, on the character, apparently, in the book, based on me. I'm not a right-winger. And when I looked to set up the platform, I didn't go looking for rich American billionaires. In fact, I decided when I set up the platform it would have to be funded and supported by New Zealanders. So it would be a New Zealand enterprise. And Eleanor, I would have been, uh, told you that for free had you uh, rung up and had a talk to me about that. I think eight years is too long to hold on to a grudge against the Taxpayers Union or me or John Key or anyone. I note also you no longer live in New Zealand. You've decided it's all too much and you've decided to go and live in Britain. I hope we're not paying you any more money as a government. I'm sure you're going to make a millions and millions more out of your latest book. And I wish you well, because I understand you're a very good writer, even though the luminaries I just could not get through. Next thing we know, of course, Peter Jackson will be making a movie about that. <coughs> Excuse me. And you can get away with poking fun at me because you'll say this character <laughs> is not based on anyone living. And I smile and I say thank you for the attention, but you need to chill and calm the farm a little bit.